Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Hey, I'm late because I was smudging the house. (laughs) That is actually a legitimate like excuse in my world. Like, why are you running late today? Well, I felt the need to smudge the house and, you know, just purify the space and ask negativity to leave and set some intentions for my family right? If you don't set your own intentions, someone else may set the intention for you. (laughs) So yeah, I have this beautiful smudge stick that um, I received as a gift from Jen Goes Outside. So thank you, Jen. I'm still loving it. I just, you know, burn a little bit here, burn a little bit there. I burned quite a bit of it this morning and really focused my thought. We've had so many messages. I think that is the message. Like, that is the message now to really focus your thought what are you thinking about what are you intending what are you planning what are you creating what are you manifesting and um yeah i do want to manifest some different type of things up in here so anyways i i did a facebook live last night and it went pretty okay Um, so that was fun, but why I want to tell you is because yesterday we did the law of healing. Um, that was our universal law that we did yesterday. Number 38, the law of healing, the ability to channel energy, right? That, that prana, that chi, that Holy Spirit, that energy from source, right? Reiki, if you, if you will, Reiki energy, that ability to channel energy to remove blockages in ourselves and others. And we talked yesterday morning about how intent directs the energy. We can either direct it to the past, the present, or the future. Um, So anyways, that was yesterday. And then wouldn't you know it, the first card that I pulled last night from the Cosmic Initiation deck, the same exact deck that I'm giving away, at Herbal Marie this week for the giveaway. I thought I would work with that deck so I could, you know, show people what was in it. The very first card that that we pulled was Healer Within. So it was just so hilarious and entertaining and fun for me to literally start my day off yesterday with you talking about the law of healing and then I'm inspired to do a live stream at Facebook of all places and the first card is the healer within so this healing energy is like coming for you baby (laughs) it wants us to access it it wants us to utilize it it is our inherent channel ability to channel this energy so that was really cool and it was also cool yesterday how we talked about the 7.8 Hertz the earth's pulse beat and if you hook us up to a machine while we're doing our healing work, our brain waves um, may actually get to that 7.8 hertz when we get in sync with the earth. So, so many messages to be outside. It's kind of dreary where I'm at right now. I, I was already outside with chickens, but I have the windows open just to let in that morning air. And of course, when you're smudging, you want to open up the windows and give the negativity an escape route, like get out the window. (laughs) And um, yeah, I really definitely smudged quite a bit this morning. And there's still so much more left on the smudge stick. Like it's incredible because you think like it all burn up real fast, but it doesn't. So yesterday we, I, the other thing that I have on my notepad is healing, healing by a trigger and a leap of faith. So sometimes we do have these spontaneous healings because we just have such a spiritual connection in that moment, um, you know, that it just, we just get in alignment 
and the source energy comes in, works its magic, and bam, we're healed. So I think the big thing is, is if there is something right now in our lives and our bodies and our minds that is needing of healing. You know, it's not just something that we want to suppress symptoms and make it seem like it go away. Like we legit have to do the inner work, right? We have to heal our body on a physical level, emotional level, mental level. Figure out how we manifested this, why, why has it come back? Is there a lesson to be learned? Like what's going on here? Or is it just, you know, a physical thing like I am not paying attention to my body like it's asking for something probably very simple, you know, more more fresh foods, fruits and vegetables, more water, more herbal tea, less junk, less sugar, less meat. I mean, like what is it that is not resonating within me anymore? Is it something physical? Is it something mental? Am I thinking am I thinking negative thoughts? Am I being judgmental? Have I let go of my trauma? If not, if you're holding trauma in your body, then you're going to keep whatever dis-ease is going on active. So take a self-evaluation moment and, you know, just see what's going on. And if you can't figure it out, it's like I would still proceed with bringing in the energy of the creator, of source, of healing. I would bring in that healing energy anyways, you know. Um, please... I call on the energy of healing. You can call on the energy of Reiki, call on the energy of God, call on the energy of Source, call on the energy of Archangel Raphael, like whoever you want to call in, whatever name you want to put to this energy. Call in the energy of love, light, and healing. Please enter my body and, and um, correct all misalignments. Correct all all misalignments enter my body and make whole and healthy again please show me and make me aware of where I can help in this healing process so you just call in the energy and sit with it and have faith that your intentions and your prayer and your asking is enough that's enough that's all you got to do and then you need to listen to your intuition, listen to your guidance, um, listen to your inspirations of what can come about for you. Like, if you ask, you will receive an answer. But are you going to be in a place to hear it and act on it? That's the question. All right, so here's the plan. It's the pl same damn plan we have every morning. <laughs> we're going to read the next law. And then we're going to pull from the herbal healing deck um, of course so much healing yesterday I had to grab this deck the herbal healing deck by Sarah Baldwin and Ashley Verkamp I mean I'm so proud of these two incredible herbalists for putting this deck together I'm proud of anyone and everyone who puts together an oracle or a tarot deck I mean people often say like oh gosh Sadie you love you love Oracle decks so much, you should make one. <laughs> and I kind of just laugh at that because I do. Oh, I do love them. I love them. But um, I don't know if I'd ever be able to put it together, you know? <clears throat> it's kind of like music. Like, I love music. I love to listen to it. I love to dance to it. But you don't see me going out there making music or writing songs or playing an instrument. Like, I'm the one who loves it, loves the music and dances to the music. I'm the appreciator. <laughs> so I think it's kind of the same thing with Oracle cards too. I'm the appreciator. I'm the reader. Yeah, just like I'm the dancer to the music, I'm the reader to the Oracle cards. Um, so yeah, like I just, I know my place kind of, and I love my place. We all play different parts in our lives and in the world and in the whole of creation um, we can do whatever we want but we don't have to do it all and you know I found myself even yesterday giving myself permission with celebrating my podcast Herbal Marie her one-year-old birthday 
like just on the side to myself, giving myself permission, like this is my gesture to the herbal community. I don't have to do it all. I don't have to put it, I don't have to do an online course. I don't have to set up a school. I don't have to do walks in the woods if that's not my thing. I don't need to make medicine. I don't need to make salves. You know what I mean? Like my my participation in the herbal community is this podcast. So I was telling myself that and just sort of like letting myself off the hook by feeling like even within my podcast I needed to do it all. No, you don't have to do it all. You can just do what you want to do. So today I think it's just such a clear message for me to do what I'm inspired to do and don't beat up on myself if I can't get it all done or think that I have to do more than what I'm inspired to do. So my ego's like, I hope you're inspired to vacuum this week. <laughs> my ego's like, um, could you knock down some cobwebs? That'd be great. All right. So today we're doing law number 39 the law of higher will and that's all i have read about it because let me move you over that's all i write about it because that's all that's it's the last sentence on the page number 39 the law of higher will so i've got to turn the page here oh good it's tiny it's so it's so tiny i needed a tiny law today um because some of these are lengthy aren't they Okay, so here is the law of higher will. The Whitney Houston song that they've just brought back on the radio, Higher Love, just jumped into my head. I will not I will not try to sing that, but you know, it's like bring me the higher love. Whoa, you know that old song? Um they're like I don't know if they've mixed it up or put a little different tweak on it. But Whitney's back. Whitney Houston is back on the radio, y'all. <laughs> All right, here's the law of higher will. Wow, we're all in our heads singing, um, bring me a higher love. Okay. From the viewpoint of our separate self and smaller will, it's normal to act on the basis of our own desires and preferences. When we surrender our smaller self and will to the guidance of a higher will and dedicate our actions for the highest good of all concerned, we feel an inspired glow at the center of our life. Hell to the yeah, baby, fo show. So let me read this again. All right, this is awesome. The law of higher will is all about it's all about surrendering our smaller self, our smaller mind. We surrender it um, to the will and guidance of a higher will, right? Like our higher self, God's will. Like I surrender my lower, smaller monkey mind to my higher mind um, to dedicate my actions for the highest good of the all. When you do that, you really do feel an inspired glow at the center of your life. That is true purpose. That really truly is true purpose. When you're like, I'm going to surrender to the, my higher will. What am I supposed to do today? And then you get these, these nudges, these inspired ideas, this guidance comes through. Even just making that intention that I'm going to surrender my smaller self and will to the guidance of a higher will and dedicate my actions for the highest good of all concerned. Just stating that in your life instantly instills a sense of purpose and it is a glow at the center of your life knowing that you're acting for the highest good of the all. So that is the law of higher will. And that's it. So it's like, what do you want to do today? Well, I want to act in my, in, in, um, I want to, I want to act with inspiration from my higher guidance, my higher will for the benefit of the all. And then, hey, 
don't be surprised when the only thing you might be inspired to do is to be happy, to be loving, to be joyful. And uh, for a start, that's enough. Like really, like there are some people that that truly is their sole purpose on this planet, just to put out energy of love and light and happiness and peace. Like we need those type of people, <laughs> like so much. We all need to be putting it out. But sometimes it's like, well, I don't really feel like I'm doing much. Yeah, but are you happy? Are you bringing love into the world? Then you're doing enough. You really are. All right, so let's get this deck out. It's in a huge box. I love it so much. The book is amazing. Amazing. Like if you were going to the beach and you needed to take a book with you, this could be it. It could be it. I don't ever, I've never went to a beach. I don't even know why I use that as an example. <laughs> I mean, I've been to beaches, but it's not like, oh, I think I'll go to the beach today. Um, that doesn't really happen in Pennsylvania. I could go to Clear Creek. <laughs> and like, I don't know, is it even open this summer? So many of our cricks are being closed down because of like overgrowth of E. coli or I don't know, it's just crazy. All right, so here we go. Our higher guidance. I surrender my smaller will to my higher will. Okay, ego, get in the back seat. Like, it's time to follow our guidance for our higher will. So let's see what we're being guided with today, with our higher will, for the highest good of the all, with the herbal healing deck. Ooh, we got a good shuffle going on here. There we go. All right, so our first card is, dang. Like, do we just like pulling the same cards even after I shuffle and, and, and uh, shuffle and shuffle and shuffle? It's Devil's Club coming in with Reclaim Your Power. And it's coming in with Wood Betony, which I used to read it Wood Be Tony. <laughs> <laughs> because that made more sense to me. Wood Betany with grounding. So reclaim your power. We've pulled this card from this deck before. I think I'm going to work at an angle today. Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. There's no light in here because I'm sitting in the dark like a creep just with the light of the window. But we've got Devil's Club with reclaim your power and Wood Betany with grounding. So it's like, like our ego, when it hears reclaim your power, it thinks that we have to hit the gym and start lifting weights and start punching people in the face. <laughs> but the herbs are like, no dummy. Um, what you need to do is what we've been telling you to do all week. Continue your grounding. It's like, don't just do it on Monday. Okay, don't just do it on the day we brought it up. Like do it on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and every day after that. Start your day off with grounding. Start your day off with anchoring your root chakra, right? Start your day off going within. That is how you reclaim your power. It's not being arrogant. It's not getting in people's faces. It's going within and feeling that inner strength, that inner knowing, that stability, that grounded energy. So Devil's Club 2 is, you know, keep on doing your healing work, right? If you have had any trauma in that root chakra, your womb area, any sexual trauma, make sure that you are still doing your healing work. It's very important. Devil's Club still says it's okay to maintain your boundaries, right? While you reclaim your power, while you reclaim your self-worth, while you know your value, while you instill a practice of self-love, the Devil's Club has those extremely spiky thorns on its root and stem and you know, it it's definitely honors boundaries. Um, Wood Betney is more of a peaceful guy. He literally looks like he has a mustache. 
this plant. You'll have to look, go to Herb Oracle on Instagram and you'll be able to see the picture of Wood, Bet Wood Betney, Mr. Mustache Wood Betney. <laughs> he is, um, yeah, it feels like a very masculine energy with this plant, with this picture. But yeah, it's very calm, but aware, alert. I mean, yeah, he has big alert eyes. And um, I'm also noticing that he is in alignment with his, I feel like it is his yellow chakra, his uh, willpower, right? This grounded energy. Um, and also he's got a higher chakra and his crown chakra kind of in alignment bringing energy in. Yeah, it's bringing energy down through him. He's sending it out with his groundedness. And um, yeah, it's really interesting. It seems like a two-way street here. So we'll look him up. We'll look him up. So it's like, okay, great. I love the idea. I love the idea of surrendering to my higher will. And it kind of looks like Wood Betney is a receiver of information so it's like okay I love the idea of surrendering to our higher will in order to receive this information we really do have to be grounded it's like an electrical wire or radio tower signal thingy you know like in order for us to receive the signal um, we have to you know be grounded and able to receive all right so we need to be able to receive Let's get two more cards. Let's get these guys some friends. <laughs> All right, so Devil's Club, Wood Betony. Which other herbal allies would like to come through? Ginseng, which is conservation. And Spalanthes, which is decision. The toothache plant coming in with decision. All right, this will be plenty for us to contemplate and think on. Let me put the deck away. So ginseng is another cute male masculine energy. He's round. He is round. It looks like the fat laughing Buddha face. Um, yeah, he is cute. But yeah, he's all about conservation. Like, okay, so make sure that you've got enough energy, enough resources within you to keep going like for me in my life okay you want to run two podcasts and do live streams and do broadcasts and make youtube videos and and take care of your family and take care of yourself and take care of your animals and still take care of your plants and your herbs and it's like you better know the art of conservation and taking care of yourself. If you wanna be able to do all that, do it well and be fulfilled in the process and not deplete yourself. So yeah, I mean, self-love, self-care, um, just nurturing ourselves and, and, and acquiring endurance. Like, I, you acquire endurance as you go. Um, when I first started like a YouTube channel, I didn't do a lot because it took a lot out of me, right? But now that I, I old lady, now I old lady, I have tons of endurance. Like I can just do a lot. And if I feel on a day that I can't do it, then I'm smart enough to, to be lazy and rest. You know what I mean? Um, I lay down even just for a little bit and then I follow my intuition in my inspiration and my guidance. So yeah, I mean, um, you gotta take care of yourself. Now, Spalanthes, we're ending with a decision. So that was another message last night that we got on the Facebook Live. And if you wanna follow me on Facebook, and by follow me, request me as a friend, it's Sadie Marie Cherico. And yeah, like that would be awesome. So it was, we our final message kind of last night was, a call to action um, we got like two messages with two of the cards that it's like okay it's really great um, to be inspired to want to help people 
and all that. And then eventually, as you learn more, you heal more, you're going to have a call to action. So it's kind of goes in a line with that. There's going to be a call to action and there's going to be a decision, right? You have to de make more decisions. We'll look into the book because I don't actually think I've ever pulled this card. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I've ever actually pulled this card. But so our, our cards are reclaim power, grounding, conservation, and decision. So we'll grab the book, the Herbal Healing Deck Guidebook, and see what Devil's Club, Wood Betany, Ginseng, and Spilanthes um, is coming through today um, to, to let us know. Um, but yeah, it's, what is really interesting is um, Spilanthes under Wood Betany, they are both anchoring their energy down into Gaia, into the earth. And uh, and then uh, ginseng and devil's club are both roots. So feel that for a sec. And let's go drink some dandelion root tea. <laughs> so when I was drinking my dandelion root tea and eating out a banana and washing up the chicken eggs, like I was like, geez, are you going to go back and finish the podcast? <laughs> Um, I was thinking about the Spilanthes, and I was like, uh, I hate that we're ending with decision, right? Like, I guess I'm one of those people that, like, thinks that they hate making decisions. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, wait a second. That is another way that we can reclaim our power, is to make more decisions, even little ones. But you getting into the driver's seat, right? You and your higher will getting into the driver's seat and making more decisions in your life. Like just, I'm going to decide today to be happy and to have energy and to be focused. I'm going to decide today to be peaceful. I'm going to decide today to go for a walk. Like you start to take back your power with every little decision that you make. And then the more decisions that you make, the more focused energy that you create in your life and the more endurance you'll get, right? Jin Singh's like, yeah, keep on making those decisions. Keep on bringing in that energy. Keep on reclaiming your power and yeah, ground yourself into your life, your own life. Take charge. Like so many people are like, oh, just you tell me what's going on. You decide like they just give over their power to other people. Um, you know, it's time for us to start making more decisions for ourselves with our daily lives. Little things, big things, all things. And that's going to be a great way for us to reclaim our power. And yeah, anchor ourselves into our life. Get into your body. Get into your life. I had to do that to myself right away this morning because I didn't want to wake up. And I just all of a sudden could feel myself like be like, I know, I know, I know, get up, you know. And I just made myself open up my eyes really, really big. And I was like, spirit, get in this body. Like I commanded um, my energy, my spirit, my soul to get in and take over. And yeah, because it was like ego wanted to go back to bed. And um, I brought in like my higher self. So yeah, like every morning you can do that, like invite spirit, invite your higher self, invite your higher will, invite your guidance into your body and hand it over to them, <laughs> hand it over to your higher self. It's still you, but, um, yeah. And it was like, let's just get on with it. So, all right. So it's so funny. I'm late here. I was smudging. I'm late. I've been dilly dally and piddling around. And now we have these four amazing cards to look up in the book. Now we did do, we did do Devil's Club before. And so I felt like, you know, we've, we've gone there. But yeah, if we are shying away from our power, Devil's Club is here to teach us a lesson, right? 
Um, so it's kind of like, do we really want to learn any more lessons or do we want to just heed the messenger? And it's like, okay, if it's time to reclaim our power, like, let's just do that. Like, or do we need another learning lesson? Do we need another lesson in being a victim of being a doormat of being taken advantage of, or is it just time for us to step up? Like, are you ready? Cause I am like, I'm done. <laughs> I, I am done learning all these ridiculous repetitive lessons. Um, it's just time for us to understand that we always have the right to claim our power. So I'm not going to read it all, but because I think we kind of got the gist of it. So let's go to Wood Bettany, which came in through it. Oh, I went right to the page. Um, let's see here. There's a quote that from Steve Goodyear that says, Get yourself grounded and you can navigate even the stormiest roads in peace. So this is a perennial Wood Bettany. Um, it's been around forever. It's like a cure-all medicine from the Middle Ages and Greco-Roman times. It was used as a prote protective charm. The leaves can strengthen the entire digestive system and can be used to settle the stomach in cases of heartburn, indigestion, and gas. It's also soothing and fortifying to the nervous system. So wood betony helps promote peace and calm through the nervous system. And at the same time, it improves cerebral circulation. So it would be good for headaches. Um, it, it would be good for after if somebody had a stroke. <clears throat> and it boosts the memory. So that's awesome. Um, this is a great herb for the elderly or for us people who think that we're getting old, which we're not. We're not, but a boost in memory, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want that? So yeah, this is obviously a reminder to stay grounded. Um, this plant actually grows close to the ground and then it sends up thin stalks with purple flowers each year. So it literally is ground, it stays towards the ground. Um, I think it can get a little bit, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think how high it can get, like two feet maybe, I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay, herbalist Matthew Wood, hey, what's up, praises the plant as a superb solar plexus remedy, improving gut level instincts and intuition, which is exactly what we've been talking about. Um, so that solar plexus energy is between the ribs and the navel, and if you ever like feel it in your stomach, you get butterflies in your stomach, that's the solar plexus. It can notify you of strong emotions, even danger. But you know, like listen to your gut, right? You've heard that. Listen to your, so anytime, especially when I see Wood Betany above Spilanthes right now. So if you have to make a decision, listen to your gut feelings, okay? Your solar plexus contains deep wisdom um, that may not be known to your conscious mind. So a strong solar plexus provides self-esteem and willpower. So as it's sitting beside Devil's Club that wants to reclaim your power, wants, right? We've got Wood Betany, which is also about willpower. And today we're talking about the law of higher will. Um, so let's see, there's, I'm just going to skip down here because I want you to actually buy this deck and <laughs> get this book for yourself. The Wood Betany's message is clear. Grounding yourself will serve as protection from negative and disruptive energies. So yeah, um, negative and disruptive energy, aka everyone and everything in the whole world. <laughs> it's like, you want to reclaim your power and listen to your higher guidance. So just like Devil's Club was talking about boundaries. Yeah, the the reason for having boundaries is so that the, the negativity and disruptive energies don't come into your space and distract you. And so that you can stay focused on what it is that you want to do. 
So yeah, lots of messages to ground, get your feet on the ground, be in nature, make sure that you're eating good foods, right? Um, eat some root vegetables. If you feel like you need to ground, eat some potatoes, some yams, some sweet potatoes, some carrots, some parsnips. There's a lot of beautiful root energy um, that you can take into your body. You are what you eat. Okay, so use your food um, as your energetic medicine. Um, let's see, yep. put your etheric roots into the earth, just like we were talking yesterday, and just know that you are safe in the arms of Mother Earth. She loves you very, very much. So yeah, um, grounding will also help you maximize the use of energy so that none is wasted. And isn't that funny now that'll that'll take us over to ginseng, which is talking about um, conservation. But first, before we leave with Bethany, it says, if you are having trouble realizing a goal, getting grounded is the key. You need not exert any more energy. Just focus the energy you are already putting out. So you don't need to run faster on the hamster wheel. Just start focusing all that energy that you already have. By staying present in your body from moment to moment, your willpower will automatically yield better results with greater efficiency and ease. So we're definitely talking about willpower today, aren't we? Um, I love it. All right, let's get over here to ginseng. He is cute. He really, really, really is. Um, ginseng, energy boosting properties, right? We know it. It's a rejuvenative and it's stimulating. Um, but it's not, it's not um, like caffeine, right? I mean, it says ginseng is often misconceived as being similar to the stimulating effects of caffeine. In fact, ginseng is much healthier and lasting approach to energizing. It's the king of all tonics. Um, it's an adaptogen. It helps us deal with stress. That's physical, emotional, mental. It's great for fatigue and debility, and um, it promotes tissue growth and regeneration and rest restoration. It's a sexual tonic. And um, yeah, it's good for all that fertility, impotence, and can be used as an aphrodisiac. <laughs> he does kind of look like a cheeky little bugger. All right, so um, <laughs> this has been over harvested, so you want to make sure that you know you're getting it from a place that's wild crafted with ethics, you know. And uh, let's see what else it says. It is a, it's a masculine plant spirit, grounding yang energy. So another, another grounded plant coming through. Gosh, what kind of decision are we going to have to make, you guys? Like, like get your feet in the ground, y'all. Um, it is, it's going to be, something's coming up for us. I want to, I want to just drop down to the bottom. It says the bottom line when you draw ginseng, it is to care for yourself. Try not to expend too much energy at this time, but if you must, take care to regenerate yourself afterward. And so that's what Wood Bettany was saying too. It's like, you don't have to put out even any more energy. You already are doing a lot. Just start to focus, focus what you do have. Focus the energy that you do have. It's not like, I need more energy. No, actually, like, if you could just have a little willpower. And, um, yeah, Splanthes is saying, yeah, make decisions to direct your current amount of energy specifically to the things that you want to accomplish, right, for the highest good, right, the higher will. What is it that you really want to get done today? So pick and choose. You're not going to be able to do it all, and you shouldn't. That's just insane. But if today is the day that you should vacuum, <laughs> then do it. If today is the day that you should maybe work on 
the lemon balm podcast for herbal murray then let's focus 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 hocus pocus focus let's do it and um let's feel good about it so if you feel especially drained it may be time to you know just take the time to regain your strength so strive to channel your energy inward and trust that your strength will return. And even ginseng is asking you to look deep within yourself and uncover forces operating beneath the surface. So if you are constantly zapped, right? If you are just constantly zapped and it's like, well, why? What's really going on? So investigate a little bit. And I said zapped and we got the toothache plant, that numbing, the numbing toothache plant. Let's see here. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. So as you make more decisions in your life, you are focusing more energy. So just start making decisions about everything, little things, you know, like, Pick out a specific pair of socks in the morning. No, don't just reach in there and grab whatever. Like get kind of specific in your life with the minute to the bigger things and just see how that works for you. So um, <clears throat> this plant is actually native to the tropics of Africa and South America. Um, it's a small perennial that can be grown as an annual in temperate climates. And I have yet to be able to grow it. Everyone's like, oh, Splanthes is so easy to grow. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think I need to get a start of it or, or be more um, like deliberate with my seed starting efforts, not just throw it in the ground and be like, see ya bye. All right. So it's analgesic. It's antibacterial. It's also called the toothache plant. And if you nibble a single flower... Um, it can send the entire mouth into an intense sensory experience by tingling, followed by numbness. Unlike synthetic remedies for toothache, Spilanthes eases the pain while also clearing away infection. So it's like, it's like, um, it's not just going to make you feel, it's not just going to numb the symptoms, it's actually going to be healing with the antibacterial properties so that's kind of like I even thought of ginseng there for a second it's like yeah you want more energy but if there's a reason why you don't have it like you don't just want to drink coffee and pretend to have more energy like don't you actually want legit energy like your own natural reserve of endurance and power right that's what we want so so noted. Um, let's see. It's also good for the entire digestive tract, boosting its function. It's a tonic for the immune system. It's antiviral, antifungal. So it's just good for everything from the flu to candida to malaria. Um, even the leaves can just be eaten fresh in a salad. All parts of the plant can be used. All right, so why is it here in our reading, though? Well, when Spilanthes appears to you, the moment calls for firm and decisive action. Yeah. The mouth represents our ability to both communicate and derive nourishment, and the teeth represent our decision-making process. Ooh, interesting. Our teeth represent our decision-making process huh that's interesting like if you've had a lot of tooth trouble like do you find yourself being stuck in indecision do you hate making decisions oh my gosh so make make more decisions in your life for the sake of your teeth <laughs> um every moment we chew and digest information from our experiences to form the basis of our future decisions. So yeah, it's basically just saying like, it's time to make a decision within your life, to take a stand and commit to a position. 
This requires you to retrieve energy that has become scattered from too many projects, goals, or ideas. So isn't that interesting? Like, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we've been talking about this whole time. Like if, if we feel like we have, we have to do it all, we have to be super mom, we have to be super dad. Like, it's like, how about we just actually be effective in our life? And that kind of means paring down at times and just doing the things that actually matter and are meaningful to you. If we become too scattered, what's the remedy for that? Grounding, right? Um, and that will help conserve our energy and make us more powerful so that the decisions that we do make, we can line up with it. So yeah, focus on one area of your life today and just get, get some decisions and things done specifically for that. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely a big invitation for us to um, take a good look at our life and ourselves. And, you know, yeah, before we commit to another thing, really think, is this going to add to my life or not? Because um, minimalism is sexy to me. <laughs> Doing less sounds like a great idea. You actually get more done when you do less. I mean, if you're just trying to do it all and you're running around and really just just being crazy, it's like let's pare down, really. And then what and then commit to what is calling you. What's your higher will is calling you. Um so yeah, it we might have to communicate about that might have something to do with our mouth we might have to defend our position with truth and honor people hate it when you say no like people hate it when you when you don't let them decide what's best for you but this is all about you reclaiming your power um, you grounding your energy and you making the right decision for your life um, let's see. It also has a little message that we want to, I think, communicate with others carefully and not use harsh words, okay? So if you are going to be cutting a few things off your to-do list, you can do that in a nice way. You don't need to tell people to F off. F off, I ain't doing your shit no more. <laughs> There's a nicer way to go about that. You don't have to be like that. Maintain integrity and truth with your words. Um, but it says, do not divulge secrets to unworthy ears. Your intellect comes into play as the swift winds of change move through your life. Great discernment is called for in a time that requires you to take a stand. Stay true to yourself and your highest ideals. Let truth and justice become your guiding principles. And there is no doubt you will be led to higher forms of nourishment. Dang, here we go. Wow, so this really is a message for you to walk your highest path, right? The path of your higher will, um, your true path, your spiritual path. Um, the spiritual calling, oh, it's getting louder, isn't it? It's really getting louder. So it's time to strengthen yourself, be the spiritual warrior, reclaim your power, ground yourself into the earth, where you are held and safe and powerful. And um, yeah, be ready to gently, kindly, and compassionately defend, not really defend, but stand for what you believe in. Yeah, stand for what you believe in and make sure that you stay on your path for your highest good, for the highest good of the all, no matter what. Yeah, for sure. Walk your highest path. Um, so thank you so much, Devil's Club, 
for reminding us to reclaim our power. Thank you so much, Wood Bettany, for um, just really instilling on us the importance of grounding our energy, listening to our gut feelings, and um, activating that energy in our solar plexus so that it may guide us. Thank you, Ginseng, for reminding us all about conservation, using the energy that we do have, and quit just being so scattered and drawn thin. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is time to pull it in and pull your energy commitments in and really focus on what's truly important. Um, Because once you start on the highest path of your spiritual journey, that will become the most important thing to you. You will see that this other stuff is just distractions from you connecting with spirit. And um, yeah, that could be possibly maybe some of the decisions that you're going to have to make in your life. So anyways, thank you so much, um, Spilanthes Toothache Plant. Um, I hope I don't need you (laughs) anytime soon. Um, So as a preventive care for my teeth, let's start making more decisions. Let's reclaim our power. Let's get into our bodies, into our, into our higher minds, and let's get some beautiful things manifested in our life. So thank you so much. On that note, I am going to go work on the Lemon Balm podcast. <laughs> for real. So much love to you.